This is the digestive system. It's a big model. <clears throat> so I'm going to have to um, move it around, kind of make you a little bit seasick, right? I want to show you how it has three dimensions. Okay. And <clears throat> I'm going to follow the path of food through the body and go over all of the um, organs and structures as we go. And I've got my trusty lab manual here so that I don't make a mistake. Um, meaning like go over the wrong structures. So in the head, we have the oral cavity, <coughs> which is another word for the mouth here. The palate is the roof of the mouth that separates the nasal cavity from the oral cavity. And the palate is both hard, made of bone here, remember the maxilla, upper jawbone, and then soft. The soft palate is back here, and the tip of the soft palate is the uvula. The uvula functions to block food and drink off from the nasal cavity when you swallow. So when you swallow, um, one thing that happens is that the uvula goes back like this to block entrance of food and drink into the nasal cavity. And of course, if you talk or laugh while you're swallowing, then it may not work properly. <clears throat> and then don't forget the epiglottis does the same thing. It fold, when you swallow, it folds down over the larynx to keep food and drink going into the esophagus, which is here behind the trachea. This is the tongue, obviously. And then the throat, remember, is called the pharynx. So food passes from the oral cavity into the pharynx and then into the esophagus. The esophagus is a long muscular tube that leads to the stomach. So this is the stomach. Here, I'm gonna open it for you because I think it's more recognizable when it's open. <coughs> And the um, sphincter between the esophagus and the sphincter is called the lower esophageal sphincter because it's on the lower part of the esophagus. Esophageal is, you know, the adjective form of esophagus, obviously. And it keeps food <coughs> and stomach contents in the stomach. In other words, it, re it prevents regurgitation or going backwards. Stomach acid is very caustic, so you don't want it going into the esophagus, if at all possible. And there are people who have a weak lower esophageal sphincter, and it doesn't hold the stomach contents in the stomach very well, and the acid splashes up and causes heartburn right okay here's the liver and then under the liver i'm just going to try and show you the liver and then um, they flip the liver up it's not normally in this position it's normally this way but they flip the liver up so that you can easily see the gallbladder which is green and in real life bile is green also so um, they colored that appropriately and this is also the real color of the liver anyway after food is in the stomach, it passes into the first portion of the small intestine, which is the duodenum, also known as the duodenum. Both of those pronunciations are equally correct. And there's a sphincter between the stomach and the duodenum. In other words, it keeps the stomach contents in the stomach until the stomach is done processing the contents, the food. So. Uh, it opens when it's time for the, what well, we call it chyme at that point, to pass into the duodenum. So this right here is called the pyloric sphincter. Okay, so now we're in the duodenum, and this is the pancreas. So I've got this big shadow going on. Um, so there's the pancreas. It's an, a spongy material, and you can see the duct going through the pancreas, and that duct carries digestive enzymes into the duodenum. See these two outlets here? All right, so then we're in the small intestine. Oh, by the way, this is a spleen. We don't talk about the spleen in this chapter. 
So this is the small intestine. Small means small in diameter, not small in length. It's very long, but this is the small intestine of which the duodenum is a part, meaning there are um, three main parts to the small intestine. You are learning the, I'm just checking the list here. Um, you're learning the duodenum and then the rest of it is just, we're just gonna call it the small intestine. Okay, here. And then we have the large intestine and we've removed a part of the large intestine that goes from here over to here. So imagine that that is still there. Food passes from the small intestine into the large intestine. This is the tail end, the distal end of the small intestine. And then it empties, we call it feces now, into this first portion of the large intestine. The first portion is called the cecum. So this is the cecum, C-E-C-U-M, and this is the appendix. It's a lymph organ, a lymphatic organ that you probably did not learn about in uh, this class, but it is um, this extension, this structure, this organ hanging down off of the inferior cecum. And then you have the ascending colon, ascending, ascend means to go up, and then you have the transverse colon, which is missing here in this picture, but in the um, lab pictures, in the lab practical, it'll be there. I just wanted to show you what was underneath here, and I'm holding the camera with one hand and my other hand. I need two hands to put it back. Okay, so then we've got the descending colon over here. Remember, ascending means to go up, transverse means to go across, descending means to go down, and then the sigmoid colon, the Greek letter sigma is the letter S, and this looks like a backwards S because it's kind of curved here. And then feces empty into the rectum, which is here. In fact, they've even colored it brown to show you feces. The anus is a sphincter that holds the feces in. Part of it is smooth muscle, part of it is skeletal muscle, so you have control over uh, one of them because there are two sphincters there and you um, do not have control over the other one, right? Um, looking through the list now, okay. And that is it for this model. Don't forget the teeth model for this chapter two.